Uh, greetings, Matt fans. All right, so welcome to Calculus. So actually, this first chapter has got some basics that is not really calculus related, um, but we need to kind of, you know, kind of show you a few things here about graphing, about some of the properties of logs, just there's a variety of things, parametrics, um, and then we get into more calculus in uh, chapter two. So this is a relatively short chapter. Um, so this first day is actually about graphing. Now, this is all really a review to you guys. Um, except maybe one function that you maybe have not seen before, which we'll get to right at the end. Um, but uh, anyway, let's just kind of talk about it. Just like I said, it's a good review. So uh, the first problem here, it says, uh, you know, of course, graph this function. So let's just cursor down here. And uh, the first thing you want to do before you graph a rational function is you want to see if you can simplify it. Okay. And so we're going to do that. And of course, you know, you can factor the top to x plus 3, x minus 3. And the bottom is x plus 3. So what happens is this cancels, which is kind of nice. Um, and then your new function, really, that you're graphing is f of x equals x minus 3, or y equals x minus 3. Now, let's see if I can... Okay, I'm messing up here a little bit. Okay. So x minus 3. Now, here's the deal. We cross this off. This is actually really significant. So this is crossed off here, math fans. And it doesn't just go away, Okay. What happens is this becomes a hole, H-O-L-E, okay, and the hole, it becomes a hole. And so uh, you have to graph it. It's a hole in that graph. And the way you kind of remember that, because kids always forget that, and please do not forget that, but kids always forget when they cancel it out that it actually becomes a hole, because then what the kids do is they just graph y equals x minus 3, and then they totally forget the hole. So I always tell the kids, and in fact, uh, this comes from way back in the day, but you want to, when you whenever you cancel, it's can, can's hole. Hole. Hey, pretty cool. Can's hole. So if you cancel, you can't hold, you have a hole. Okay? So don't forget that. So here's the deal. When I graph this guy, um, it's going to be, of course, y intercept is negative 3, and, and then it's going to go up, of course, up 1 over 1. And so the graph looks something like this, right? It's a very nice graph. It's linear. That's cool. So it's actually turned out not to be a rational function. Though it looks like it, right? When you first look at it, um, and after you do the canceling, you just get uh, x minus 3. And uh, But the only issue is, and let's go back to the problem. What did I cancel out? I canceled out this x plus 3. So there's a hole at x equals negative 3, right? Because negative 3 is where it would be undefined. So when something is undefined, it's either going to be a hole or it's going to be an asymptote. Okay, in this case here, it's a hole. Okay, so let's say at x equals negative 3. So even if you want to plug in negative 3 into this just to get the exact value, right, f of negative 3, it's negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. So we let's graph that. So at negative 3 and negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So uh, there's actually, let me draw this in a different color here, right? There's actually a hole right here. And then it continues on. Okay? All right. So make sure you do that. Don't forget, you can't hold. Okay? All right. So let's keep going here. Let's go to the next one. Now, this next one, there's nothing to cancel out. So I wanted to do a basic one, right, where you – that's not a hole, of course. It is actually an asymptote. Um, so let's talk about with rational functions. You have uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so our vertical asymptote is when you set the denominator, so set this equal to zero. We're going to call that, again, our vertical asymptote. And so our vertical asymptote is actually x minus 3 equals zero, so x equals 3. All right, now I require that you tell me x equals or y equals, because if I say, hey, where there, where's our vertical asymptote? And you say, oh, there's a vertical asymptote of 3, I'll be like, Oh, three what? Three chickens, three elephants, three schmutzkies. I don't know what three, I don't even know what that means, okay? So you guys say, oh, x equals three. It's an equation, guys. The vertical asymptote is an equation, and uh, it's a vertical, and a vertical line is an x equals, okay? So uh, we have a nice vertical asymptote. And then we have our horizontal asymptote. And if you remember, we're going to do, um, we actually have two scenar three scenarios, okay? Okay. Uh, if the degree is bigger on the bottom, again, this is a review, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but if the degree is bigger on the bottom than the top, 
um, which it is. So the degree, this, right, this is an X on the bottom, this is a one, so the degree is zero on top and one on the bottom. It's bigger on the bottom. The horizontal asymptote is gonna be um, automatically y equals zero, okay? If the degree was bigger on the top than the bottom, you probably remember it is called an oblique asymptote. We're actually not gonna talk about that too much, okay? We might get to that later on in calculus, but we won't talk about this for, for this chapter, drawing an oblique asymptote. So it would be some, you know, line going, you know, diagonally, right? That's an oblique asymptote, all right? And then, uh, which actually is gonna be our third example here, is when the degree is the same on the top and the bottom. And if you remember that, then you take, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second here, but you take the coefficient of uh, the highest degree term for the top and the bottom, and it would be y equals those coefficients, okay? All right, but we'll talk about that a little bit. But anyway, the degree is bigger on the bottom than it is on the top, so it's automatically y equals zero. All right, there are no holes in this one, so let's just go ahead and graph these asymptotes. So x equals three, so just put a couple lines here. All right, so let's make it a nice little thick line here. So uh, at x equals three, so don't forget to draw it correctly. X equals three, there is an asymptote, and then at y equals zero, there is a horizontal asymptote. So my question to you is, um, just to see what you guys can remember, uh, can you cross an asymptote? Now, some of you might be saying yes, and some of you might be saying no, and if you remember back, there's certain ones you can cross and certain ones you can't cross, okay? So, uh, which ones can you cross? I can cross a horizontal asymptote, because you guys remember this from last year, probably in, uh, in uh, Algebra 2. Um, if this was an asymptote here, remember it crosses it, but it always comes back to it. That's the whole thing with asymptotes. You'll approach an asymptote, which is gonna be our First or second chapter talking about approaching asymptotes, um, but basically you can cross it. It's okay, okay, but you cannot cross. If I have a vertical asymptote, you can't cross that. Okay, no, you can't do that because think about it. A vertical asymptote is when you set that bottom equal to zero. It's impossible to have that bottom equal to zero. So there's no way you can have a value at x equals three because the the uh, equation would be undefined. So it is impossible to cross a vertical asymptote but it is possible to, grow, to cross a horizontal asymptote. Okay, oops, let's go back. So let's see, we're graphing, um, uh, basically what I'm looking for, when, when I ask you guys to graph a rational function, I'm not looking for a super precise graph. Okay, the way I kind of look at it is, um, I just want you to understand what the graph looks like. Okay, I don't want you to graph like 50 points because you would get done with one graph and you wouldn't be able to finish the test, okay? So this is what I'm asking you guys to do. I'm asking you guys to make a T-chart. And on the T-chart, um, you're going to pick a point on either side of this vertical asymptote. Okay, that's important. I just want one point on either side of the vertical asymptote because I want to know, is it up in the, in the right corner, the left corner, the bottom left, bottom right? I want to know where that graph is because I kind of have an idea what a, a rational function looks like. So over here, I'm, I'm getting kind of messy here, but a rational function is going to look like this or maybe like this or like this, you know, it's gonna be somewhere in one of these quadrants here with asymptotes or whatever. But that's the way a rational function usually looks like, okay? And it gets fancier too. If you get something a little crazier, we're not gonna get anything too crazy, just a basic rational function. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna pick on either side of the x equals three, I'm gonna pick two and I'm gonna pick four. That's all I need guys, all I'm looking for. So if I put a two back into the original equation, one over two minus three, is negative one over, or one over negative one, so it's negative one. And I put a four in there, I get one over four minus three, which is one, or just one, okay? So I have two negative one. So I'm plot that. Uh, two negative ones right here, and uh, four comma one. Oops, sorry, God. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Got to plot them in the right spot, okay. So we're gonna do two negative one, which is right here, and four positive one, which is right here. So that's all I'm looking for, guys, just two, these two dots. That's all I'm looking for. So then when you graph it, I know the graph is gonna look like this. Kind of like that. And this one's gonna look like this. Oh, look at that, beautiful. Perfect. Amazing graph. 
which is kind of non-denominational holiday colors too. Very nice. Okay, so uh, that's all I'm looking for. Uh, you know, it, uh, this one turned out to be the top right and the bottom left. Okay, and there are no holes in there because there's no, we didn't cancel any out. Remember, cancel, cancel out. So that's our graph. Okay. All right, moving on. So this last rational function kind of is a little bit of everything here. I kind of want to do that just to uh, show you everything. Okay, so um, first thing I'm doing is I'm going to factor because I need to know what I can cancel out of here. And um, I don't care how you factor if you want to use your factor cubicles or factor cylinders or factor boxes. I don't care. Okay, and on the bottom, x plus 2 and x minus 1. There we go. Look at that. Fact is that. So right away you see you're like, hey, okay, cool. This cancels. Oh, cancel hole. So I know I would write this down right away. I know I have a hole at x equals positive one. So I need to plot that later. Don't forget, otherwise you'll lose a point. Okay. So now I'm really graphing um, my new function, which is f of x equals x plus three over x plus two. Okay. So we need a couple things here. We need a uh, vertical asymptote, which is really easy. Va. Okay, uh, you said the bottom equals zero. So x plus two equals zero. So x equals two, negative two. Okay, that's my vertical asymptote. And then I have my, ah, my horizontal asymptote. And this is what I talked about before, where the degree is the same on the top and the bottom, um, which I have x plus three over x plus two, it's gonna be one over one, right? One x over one x, which is one. So it's y equals one. Again, guys, do not forget y equals or x equals. If you forget that, it's wrong. It doesn't even make sense to say, oh yeah, the horizontal asymptote is five. Well, like five, five what? I don't even know what that means. Okay, you gotta do, give me an equation. Okay, so um, now uh, we're going to plot a couple points here. They're really not bad. Pretty easy. Okay. Remember, I'm I'm uh, plotting a point on either side of the vertical asymptote. So I'm going to pick negative three and negative one. Okay. And uh, if you plug a negative three in here, you get uh, zero on top and negative or one negative one on the bottom. So anyway, it turns to be zero. And you put a negative one in there, you get two on top and one on the bottom. So you just get two. So there are your points. Okay. So now let's go ahead and graph it. Let's do our. Uh, let me put a couple marks on here. Okay. All right. And let me change the color here to make it a little bit nicer to see. Again, my uh, vertical asymptote is x equals negative two. So it's going to be right here. Okay, vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote y equals one. So it's right here. Sweet. Okay, and then we plot a couple points here. Do that in blue. So negative three zero is right here, and negative one two is right here. Okay, that's cool. So go ahead and graph that. And, and guys, and get, hug the asymptote, will you? I mean, I don't want to see any messy. If you guys like do this, this is like super messy. I see people where you have an asymptote like this and like this, and they just go like that. I mean, what what is this? I don't even know where this is going. This is an oblique asymptote. You need to hug the asymptote. It's like you hug your puppy, okay? You need to hug the asymptote. It needs to be nice and close. Hug your donkey, all right? That's right. We can't really talk about asymptotes. It's very vulgar. It's really a donkey burst. Okay, so let me, let me just erase this. So we're now we're all done here, right? Everything is good. Boo! No, we're not all done here, right? What do we have here, math fans? Right, we have a hole. Okay, do not forget to label that hole. If you forget to label the hole, if you get to draw it in, I'm gonna take a point off because it's not the whole graph. You cannot forget that. You can't hold, you create a hole. That's why I had you write down, as soon as you cancel it off, I had you write down hole at x equals one. So you don't forget it. So what you need to do is, um, at x equals one, 
You can draw a hole. Now you'd be nice if it was a little bit neater and not really having a line through because it shouldn't have a line through it, but it's harder on my uh, video here to, to erase that line. So, um, but I'm just gonna make it look nice and see if I can do it. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, sweet. Okay. So I am going to draw it real nice and now. There we go. All right, that's cool. It's a good graph. All right, so there we go. Okay, pretty easy. Um, but don't forget the hole, but that's your graph. All right, cool, but don't forget. Uh, you got a hole and you have, or it's undefined. So, you know, if I, just for a question here, if I said, hey, what's f of one? Okay, f of one is, even though you would look to say, hey, Mr. Curves, I can plug this into that equation. I could put a one in there. That would give me four over three or four thirds. Yeah, it looks like it would. Okay, but it's not because the original function, if I go back to the original function and I put a one in there, just look at the bottom. I put a one in there. It's one squared is one. One plus one is two. Two minus two is zero. So it's undefined really. Okay, so you can't, you really can't uh, just plug it in into the new equation. You have to look at the original equation. Okay, all right. So that is uh, rational functions. Hopefully you guys are good to get good to go with that. We kind of spent a little bit of time on that, but that was kind of important. Okay, uh, these next few graphs, you guys are pretty good with this, right? This is absolute value. And um, if you remember to find the vertex, uh, the, the uh, parent function or the, the general term is um, x minus h plus k. So you always look at this uh, inside the absolute value of the second term, and you always do the opposite of that. To find, remember, the main thing here is to find the vertex of the absolute value graph. Okay, so in this case here, the vertex is positive 2 comma negative 3. Very important, okay? And basically what you need to do now is you need to plug in a couple points on either side of that to figure out the graph. So I'm going to do a nice t-chart. Um, and I'm going to put that... Uh, Two negative three in the middle, and you know I'm going to pick up just I pick one one point on either side. So because I know these are linear because it is x minus two, so one and three. So if I put a one in there, um, one minus negative two is negative one. Absolute value of negative one is one. One minus three is negative two, and I put a three in there. Three minus two is one. Absolute value of one is one. One minus three is negative two. Now these should match up. If they don't, then you did something wrong. Okay. So let's go ahead and plot those points. Okay, so one negative two, uh, two negative three, and three negative two. All right, cool. So let's make it nice. We'll use blue. Okay, that's pretty easy, right? Absolute nice little friendly absolute value graph. All right, move on here. Um, this is a uh, nice little quadratic. It's in vertex form. Okay, so that's actually pretty easy. It's just like absolute value then. Um, your vertex is going to be opposite of that negative 1, so it's 1, comma, 2. Okay, and kind of the same thing. I want to pick a few more points. Now, I with absolute value, it's pretty easy to pick like just two points, one either side, um, just because it's linear, right? But with a quadratic, you really want to pick up two points on either side. Otherwise... I don't know, sometimes people just draw it as a V and it's really not supposed to be a V. So I'm going to pick um, the vertex, of course, being in the middle, and then 0, negative 1, and 2, and 3. Okay, so I'm going to plot, uh, you know, plug this point into here, and I'm going to get a 1 here and a negative 2. And again, I, I, you could do this. I'm just doing, getting trying to get through the video here. So 1 and negative 2. And again, these are the same, right? They should be because it is uh, symmetric. Okay, so let's plot those points. Okay. Uh, so... So negative one, negative two, uh, zero, one and one two 
and 2, 1, and 3, negative 2. Okay. Let's, we'll use red for this one. It's very friendly looking. There you go. Okay. Oh. Oh, excuse me, I caught there. Um, I want you to understand too that, and be careful about that, right? This, well, the cursor up here. Okay, this is in a negative here. Okay, so you should know it opens down as opposed to the absolute value graph, the, uh, the value in front was positive, right? Positive x minus two, absolute value x minus two. Okay, all right, so that was pretty easy. Um, this next graph is just not as easy. It's still pretty easy though. It's it's just a quad. It's another quadratic. It's another U shape. I can tell this one's going up, but it's not in vertex form. So you have to find out the vertex of this. Um, so if you guys remember, the vertex is opposite of B over two A, and of course A being the in front of the x squared, B being here, and C being here. Okay. So it's opposite of B, so it's four. We do opposite as opposed to negative because in case it's negative, then it becomes positive, okay? So four uh, over two times two. And that gives me four over four, which is one, okay? So, and again, it's a coordinate, so we need to do F of one and plug that in and you get uh, negative one. So my vertex is one, negative one. So as I said before, you're gonna do a nice little T-chart um, with the one negative one in the middle there. And I'm gonna do zero negative one and two and three. Okay, and if I plug those in, again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that stuff, seven and one, and this is one and seven. Again, these, of course, match up. And if they, you know, they don't, you did something, you, you did some computational error, okay? All right, so go ahead and plot these guys here. I just need to go up to seven here. Okay, so we got negative one comma seven, zero one, uh, one negative one, uh, two comma one, and three comma seven. Okay. And then your graph looks like this. You know, give me a U shape here too. Don't don't give me a V. V's are absolute value. Okay? So that's it. That's not bad, right? That's pretty sweet. Alright, moving on. Okay, so the next group here is a piecewise function. Now, as soon as I say piecewise function, uh, kids always go, oh my god, they're horrible. Okay, guys, piecewise functions are not difficult. They really aren't. The key to a piecewise function is you need to um, you need to plot points. That's really the key to a piecewise function. If you plot a bunch of points, you'll be good to go. Okay, if you don't plot the points, then you're going to have a rough time. All right, so what points do you plot? Well, you want to plot the transition points. And when I say the transition points, if you look at this first piecewise function number seven, it says um, the function is 2x minus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 2, and then the transition point is that x equals 2. So then it, after when it gets less than 2, it's negative x plus 4. Okay, so that's your transition point. And um, so I, I need to plot this point here. So if I figure out this point, it's 2 comma, and if I put a 2 into here, I get 1. And if I put a 2 into here, I get 2. So those are transition points. And that's what you need to plot, guys. All right, so you're going to plot those, and then you're going to use the slopes. So plot, then use slopes. Now, obviously, using slopes works well when you have a linear function. If it's, you know, if it's quadratic or something different, then it's just a, just a little more challenging because you just have to figure out what the graph looks like, okay? But you, gotta, you always have to plot the points. Okay, and if you notice the top one, the greater than or equal to two, of course, it's a solid dot. Be careful, right? And when it's less than two, it's a it's an open dot. Okay, so um, I'm going to plot these points. I'm, I have the cursor up here. I can't fit everything in one spot here. So 
uh, 2 comma 1, that's going to be a solid dot. And 2 comma 2 is going to be an open dot. Right, so that's what you need now. Now let's look at the problem. Now most of the time when I ask you guys to grab something, you always plot the y-intercept and then you use the slope. But you don't really don't need the y-intercept. You truly just need a point. The y-intercept is just a convenient point, okay? Um, because it's given, right? It's easy, like if I look at these two, the y-intercept is negative three and the y-intercept is four. That's pretty easy. But I don't necessarily need them. I just need a point, and then once I have the slope, then I can draw a line, you know, arrows going both ways, and I'm good to go with my graph. So literally having these transition points plotted here, that is good enough for me because now I just need the, the slope. So here's the deal. The first one was um, 2x minus 3. Which is, this is uh, the, the 2 comma 1 point. Okay, this is the solid dot. The slope is, the slope is uh, 2, and it's 2 going this way. Right when x is greater than or equal to 2. So this is the way I want to draw my graph. So that, that solid dot, I'm going to go, uh, the slope is 2. So I'm going to go up 2 and over 1 with the solid dot. And then uh, that went away. No way. Okay. Really? I don't know where the dot went to. Maybe I need to make a bigger dot. See, it's going to go away again. Don't go away. There we go. That is the graph for the 2x minus 3. And you're, you look at it and go, Mr. Gervis, it's not, there's no, what, what are you doing with that negative 3? Guys, if I would actually, and I'm going to, I don't want to do that, but if I would actually sketch this graph more to the left, it would cross at negative 3. But that's not part of the graph because it's only that function when x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay? So the second part is um, uh, when x is less than 2. So we're going to use the open dot at 2 comma 2, but it's now when you are graphing it to the left of that because it's x is less than 2. Okay, so my slope for this one is negative 1. Now, you guys are used to going down 1 over 1, but you can't go down 1 over 1 to the right because you're going to the right, and you don't want to go to the right. So remember, a negative slope is basically, uh, you can go either down one and to the right one, or I can go up one and to the left one. Do you guys agree with that? So if I go, again, from the so from the open dot, so up one and to the left one. So I'm gonna pop my point right here. Hopefully that one doesn't disappear. Ah, disappear, what the heck? Lousy software. There we go. That's what the graph looks like. Okay, it's really easy. Again, plot your points and then use the slopes. Okay? But remember, the one going to the left is always a little trickier because everyone's used to going up or down and then always to the right. But, you know, like if this was a positive slope, you'd go, instead of going up one to the right one, you'd go down one to the left one. Okay, just look at it. I mean, I can see, I can see that this line right here is a negative slope. Okay, don't get confused by it and go, oh, Mr. Scrubbers, it's a positive slope. It's pointing up. Yeah, that's great. It's pointing up. But guys, just look at the whole graph. If I ignore the arrow, it's a negative slope. Okay, same thing with the red arrow, right? It's pointing up. Of course, that's a positive slope. But if the arrow is pointing down, it doesn't make it a positive slope. It's just pointing down. Okay, so that is, that's my graph. Okay, it's not bad. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. So once again, I'm going to plot points because that's what you do when you have a piecewise function. Uh, so it's two is my transition point. So two, it's ne two negative four, and this one's two. And you might look at it and go, "Well, Mr. Curtis, there's nothing to plug it into." Well, you're right. So it's just negative four. So that actually, the transition point happens to be the same thing. So the deal is, it's uh, there's a two and a two. It's the same number, um, obviously for the x value and for the y value. So it's a solid dot and an open dot. Well, of course, the, the solid dot just covers the open dot and it makes it a solid dot. So don't try to draw an open and solid dot. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna draw one dot at two, negative four, one solid dot. Okay, and um, go ahead and let's go ahead and plot it now. So again, what I'm 
talking about to the right, that's the x is greater than or equal to 2. So I, um, the slope is 3. So I go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. So let's do that red again. So there we go. Okay. And the other one is negative 4. So what does that mean? That just means... Um, it just means y equals negative 4, right? That's pretty easy. And that's a horizontal line. So it's just going to look like this. And remember, it's to the left now because it's less than 2. Okay? And that's what your graph looks like. So key to plotting piecewise functions, plot points, and u slopes. Okay? All right. So last two here. These are functions that you're going to see a lot in calculus. Just, they're just used a lot. And so I look at the function, and I'm like, oh, okay, you can't just cancel it out because, of course, the top is piecewise, or is an absolute value, and the bottom is not, and, you know, you just can't cancel it out. So I'm not quite sure what this is going to look like. Um, so if you're not sure, plot a couple points. It really helps. So let's go ahead and plot a few points here. Um, well, I'm not sure what points I want to plot. Uh, I think I'm going to, because that is just an X on the bottom, I think I'm going to do a zero here. Just to start off, because I think that's a pretty key spot is, is zero. So setting, you know, you want to set equal to zero. Well, of course, if you put zero absolute values over zero, it's not a defined value. Okay, so this is undefined here. So I'm going to pick points on either side of it. I'm going to pick negative one, negative two, and one and two. Okay, so let's do the positive values first. They're easy. So if I put a 1 in there, absolute value one of, of 1 is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. If I put a 2 in there, absolute value of 2 over 2 is also 1. So please don't tell me, well, sometimes kids get confused and they put a 1 in there and then they put a 2. Eh, don't do that. Right? It's 1 over 1, 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, 5 over 5, etc. It always equals 1. Let's put the negative value in there. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, that's cool. Uh, put a negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2 over negative 2 is negative 1. So that's kind of interesting. So it looks like the highest value is going to get to is actually 1, and the lowest value is going to be negative 1. So this is what the graph looks like. Um, so let's just, if I plot a few points, uh, 1, 1, and 2, 2, and negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 1. Um, and you might say, oh, these points keep disappearing. I don't know why. Okay, you might look at it and say, well, that's kind of, what, what, what about as it gets closer to 0? Well, think about it, and even though I didn't write it in here, if I put negative 0 0.01, look at it. Negative 0 0.01, the absolute value of that is 0 0.01 over negative 0 0.01 is still negative 1. So this is also negative 1. I put, I'm sorry, you, you put the negative point zero one there. Okay. Oops. So that goes right there. Okay. So I, in other words, it goes all the way to the end. So this is what the graph looks like. That's it. So the graph looks like. So basically, there are holes at where it's undefined. It's a hole there. It's not. There's no asymptote. It's a hole. Um, and then it points to the right and points to the left at 1. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. Um, again, if you're not really sure, plot a couple points. Check it out. Okay, but you've got to know this kind of graph. You will see this on a quiz and test. I guarantee it. You'll see it, I don't know, for several chapters. Got to know how to do this one. So this next one is, it's almost identical to it, guys. Um, but what value am I picking here? I'm saying x equals positive 2, right? If I said that equal to 0, and solve, I get x equals 2. So really, 2 is my um, middle point, and a, a 2 makes it undefined. So I'm going to pick 1 and 0, and 3 and 4. So let's do that. Let's put a 3 in there. 3 minus 2 is 1. Absolute value 1 is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. This looks familiar. Uh, 4 minus 2 is 2. Absolute value 2 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. Hmm, interesting. Looks just like this. Okay, just have a different x values. Okay, and then I can put a one in there. One minus two is negative one. Absolute value of negative one is one. One over negative one is negative one. 
Okay, and zero. Zero minus two is negative two. Absolute value of negative two is two. Two over negative two is negative one. Look at that. Okay, so the only difference between this now is at, it's gonna start at two. Two is your magic number. And it's gonna look like this. There you go. Okay, and again, these are holes here because they're not defined. Now, the only way this could switch around is if it looked like, and I'm not going to get into this, but if it was like negative absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2. Well, just think about it. That just swaps these. That's all it does. So the graph, instead of looking like that, it would look like this. Just switching around. Okay. So basically 10 graphs. That's what your homework is like. Uh, you need to know how to do that. Again, summarize rational functions. Don't, don't forget about holes. You have absolute value. Um, you have uh, quadratic in both in vertex form and quadratic form. Um, and then you have piecewise functions. And then we have these absolute value of x over x type functions. Okay? So that's it, math fans. Hopefully you guys are good to go with this uh, all these graphs here. You have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.